y'all and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kay and this is my channel where I share all about my making adventures. Today you will see some knitting and crocheting. I've been working on a little bit of both. I finished one of my crochet objects so we've got a couple of finished objects to talk about. A few works in progress. I received a couple of things in the mail. What else do we have? I have giveaway winner to announce from last episode. We'll have a new giveaway for this episode and I'm finally ready to make an announcement about Summer Sock Camp 2023. So I hope that you will stay tuned for all of these things in today's episode. It might be a little bit of a longer one. We will see how quickly I get through everything. But you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as the Crazy Sock Lady. I will have links right down below this video for everywhere that you can find me as well as links to project pages for everything that I talk about. Finished objects, works in progress, they all have a project page that I try to keep as updated and correct as I can with all of the details from hooks, needle sizes, to yarn, to patterns, to notes for changes I've made. You can find all of that on those pages at all times. So first, let's talk finished objects. We're just gonna jump right in today. So finished objects, and also, you may be able to hear the heater, but it is so cold here today, so cold, that I'm glad the heat kicked on. I was like, of course, it kicks on as soon as I'm ready to hit record, but at the same time, it is so cold, <laughs> which I'm kind of enjoying. Um, we've had such warm weather, and now we're back to cold weather, so I don't know. I'm enjoying this last little bit of cold before I know it'll like finally start to warm up and then I'm going to be ready to get outside, work in the yard, just do all of the outdoor things. Finished objects. I finished the pair of socks for my niece, Lily, and I gave those to my sister this past weekend. I do not have them here to show and I forgot to take a finished object picture of them. Totally forgot. So I have a photo where one of the socks is done and the other one is started. So you will get to see that. I'll put that picture up here. But these were out of Zebra Yarns. Pink Flamingo was the colorway. It was the self-striping that you see there. And then it also had the black and a mini skein along with it. So it was a sock set. I did 60 stitches. That's what I always do for her socks. And I knit these on a nine inch circular US zero two millimeter. So I did do the pop of color at the cuff that y'all know I love to do. I do have a tutorial for that here on YouTube. I will link that. And then I did the contrast heel and toe. So the pop of color at the cuff was in the black and then the heel and toe were also in the black. Um, I started these on February 2nd and I finished them on March 9th. So they did, they were on the needles for, that's not too long, but longer than my socks are usually on the needles if there's something that's for a gift. So these took a little while, but I knew I was gonna be seeing my sister. So I hurried to get them done so that I could give them to her instead of having to mail them. The next finished object is what I have on here today. So this is my crochet granny wrap. This is a pattern by Anna Boo's house. So the pattern is written for, I think like a bulky or worsted. It's written for a heavier weight of yarn. I did fingering weight and I just changed the hook size that I used. So I used a 3.5 millimeter, just fingering weight held single, and it is so big. The yarn I used, the first like 24, I think we had, we did 24 days, is from a advent swap that I did with my knit group in 2022. So that's what the first part is. And then the last part I did just fingering weight scraps. Look how gorgeous this is. I'm so happy with this. So I just kept going. I just kept grabbing scraps and just went until I kept trying it on. And I just went until I felt like it was the size I wanted. I wanted something that really came down on my arms that was super large and cozy to just wrap up in. I have, if you watched a Vlogmas, you'll have seen, oh, I'm blanking on the name of the shawl, but I wore a shawl over my shoulders a lot. And I love it, I will still wear it. Calico Quilt, I think was the name of it. But I wanted something even bigger 
just that would really come down and cover my arms while I had it on and I could really just wrap it around me and this is perfect. So if you're gonna make one of these, I suggest just trying it on as you go. When you think you get close, try it on. I tried it on like a million times and I kept adding a little bit more scraps and a little bit more scraps until it was perfect. I think I probably could have even went a little bigger and I still would have been happy with it. But the great thing about this is I could go back and add to it. There's no border on it. I didn't do anything special. Um, I just stopped at the end of the row and that's it. So I could always go back and add more if I decide I want to. Is there anything else about this one? This one I started December 1st and finished March 8th. I had started it during December, opening one a day with the idea to add it in. If you watched Vlogmas, you know I quickly fell behind on all of my advent projects. And I have quite a few still that I need to finish. Um, but they will get done eventually. I'm going to be starting another one of these very soon for a gift. So I need to go through and pull out some scraps so I can get started on that. I'm not sure if I want to go with a color theme or just make it random like this. This one just, I was really just grabbing. Like I did have some of the yarns. I don't remember where it started from like maybe here to here were from a shawl that I did. They were scraps from that. So I did pull all those and just work those in but the rest were just scraps from all socks, it looks like. So yeah, super pleased with how this came out. Like I said, I'm gonna be making another one and I can't wait to start it because it was such a fun project. I did, so there were a few ends up in this like top area that I wove in and I wove in my starting and ending end, but the other ones I just did the Magic Knot Ball using, I think I showed this last time the liquid stitch and yeah no issues I did not block this because I don't really think that it needs it it's not anything I'm trying to make larger blocking it would make it a little larger and open it up more but I don't know I don't really think that as far as it goes it needs it it's just something I'm wearing around the house and I don't really care so I didn't block it or anything haven't washed it I'm just thoroughly enjoy wearing it <laughs> Okay, I only have three whips to show. Just a reminder on that because I always have comments. I wish you would show your progress on this. Why haven't you shown your progress on that? If you don't see it, that's because I haven't worked on it. That means there is no progress <laughs> to show on it. So these are the things that I have touched recently because I finished those socks. I finished this wrap. So I brought two socks and my temperature blanket, which I'm a little bit behind on, but that's okay. So this is a pair of socks in a bag by Fat Squirrel. And this is the March Yarnable Yarn. So I got it as soon as I finished Lily's socks, I think. I caked up the yarn. I started these on March 10th. We were went out of town that day and I started them that morning before we left. So I have one done. This is the first one. Such a pretty green and blue. So I knit these on nine inch circulars. I've got the second one going here. Nine inch circulars, US zero, two millimeter, 64 stitches. I did knit two, purl two for the cuff for 25 rounds, then a 60 round leg, heel flap and gusset. This is my vanilla socks pattern. And these will be for my sister Cassie. So she had commented that she liked the yarn. So while we were out of town this weekend because this first sock got a lot of work on it out and about around Columbus, Ohio. So <laughs> these will be for Cassie. The second one I am almost done with the foot. How many more rounds do I have? Probably only like 10 more rounds on the foot. I have all of my markers on this side. So I have a tutorial on YouTube. I've had a lot of questions about these markers lately from a post I made on Instagram. I place a light bulb marker every 10 rounds. I'll link the tutorial and um, up above, if you're on a device, you can just click that link. If not, it's just in the tutorial playlist on Crazy Sock Lady YouTube. 
but I place one every 10 rounds as I'm doing the first sock. Then when I'm done with the first sock, I move the marker from one sock to the next sock so that they will match. I'll have the same amount of rounds. I have a little pretzel and beer cheese progress keeper. I cannot remember where that's from, but I picked that one for this past weekend when we went with Cassie and her husband to Columbus because we went to, I think it was called World of Beer in Easton. And Cassie and James always talk about how good the pretzels and beer cheese are there. So I thought this would be appropriate because they talk so much about those pretzels and beer cheese. And they were very good, by the way. Okay, so that's these. I grabbed another pair of socks that I've worked on while we've been out and about. This is in a bag from Mountain State Stitches. And these I cast on a while back. Hmm, I did not put on here when I started those, but it has been quite a while. This is yarn by Lollipop Yarn. in her wine clock colorway. These are both fingering weight. I'm doing vanilla socks on nine inch circulars again. US zero, two millimeter. There's the mini that came with the yarn. There we go. And here it is, knit up. This is just the first sock. And I'm loving these. They're so pretty. This is, I have lollipop yarn. I've had it in my stash for a while. This is the first time I think I've ever worked with it. And it's been very enjoyable. I love self-striping. Don't work with it enough anymore. That is for sure. So yeah, I'm really enjoying these. I did 20 rounds for the cuff, knit to purl to. And then I did the cuff and the heel in the mini skein. I will not do the toe. I'll just do the toe in the self-striping. I always like, I don't know. I think the toe looks fun in the self-striping. So those will be, once I finish the yarnable socks, those will be my main focus as far as socks goes, is to get the lollipop yarn socks off my needles. My temperature blanket in a bag by Fat Squirrel. I am behind, I think I need to add from the 10th on, I believe. I could be wrong. The 9th on. So I'm behind on it, but that's not bad. And it's two rows per day. So it's so simple. I talked about this on another episode. It's linked on the project page in detail. Um, so I won't go through everything right now, but I'll just show you my progress. I really am so pleased with like it's I love that it's just random and crazy that I didn't try to do like all like blues for winter or oranges for summer I just went random and I'm so happy with it this is all fingering weight yarn from my stash I didn't buy anything new for it it's just all stash yarns so much fun so I think I'll probably work on this this evening work on getting caught up it's great for tv knitting because the rows are just knitting back and forth maybe this won't end up being too long because that's all i brought <laughs> over here to a show and we're only 15 minutes in oh i did bring so i have been working on my dishcloth still on the treadmill and i brought one that has now been used once and washed and dried once and i think that it looks great. I love it. I always love with my hand knits for my dishcloths and for my socks. I machine wash and dry them both and I love how it tightens the fabric up. So I was pleased that it did that with the dishcloths. I figured that it would, it usually does with dishcloths because when I first used it that first time, it was a little loose for what I like, but I'm pretty sure that's how all my dishcloths usually are. 
then I use them, wash them, dry them, and they snug up. So very happy with this yarn. This I talked about last time. It is the, there it is, Queensland Collection Coastal Cotton Ocean Mist. This is not the, the color number on here is not this one. I don't remember what that one was, but there's the label. And I did order some just plain gray in the Queensland cotton to just in case I did not have enough. So I, with this skein, I was able to get three dishcloths. With this one, I was not. Could just be the day, my tension, <laughs> changing my gauge, who knows. But this one, I was not able to get three, so I did two this is the third one and then i needed just a little bit to finish off so i was glad i ordered some of the gray in this yarn to be able to finish that my ends are not woven in on this yet i just finished it this morning but yeah super happy with those i have a project page that has all the details for the dishcloths that I take another drink of coffee and then we're going to talk about just a couple of things i received in the mail And so you already saw the March Yarnable yarn. So let's talk about the other stuff that came in the Yarnable box. So Yarnable is a yarn subscription service and I've been getting this for so long. They were just open to new members, but I'm not sure if that's closed yet or not. I'll have them linked below and I'll also have a coupon code down there for you guys to get $5 off of your first box. If you go and they're not open currently to new members, you just wanna put your email in and then they'll notify you when a spot becomes available because they are, they're not open all the time to new members. You have to wait until they have spots open. So the Yarnable colorway for this month was called Rest, Relax, and Recharge. That was the theme for the month. They always have a little card that tells you more about the theme for the month, about the extras that you receive. There's a scratch off discount code for Hypnotic Yarn, who does the Yarnable box. And it looks like this month, of course there's the yarn. I always get one skein of fingering weight. You can customize it to get different options, um, depending on what kind of things you like to knit or switch it up and maybe get some DK weight into your stash. I always just do one skein of fingering weight that's just what I always do. <laughs> so the extras this month, we do have a tape measure that has the Yarnable logo on it. It's a nice, like this is like a heavy duty feeling tape measure. It's very, very heavy duty. Then we have a tropical travel pack by Bella and Bear. This includes shampoo, conditioner, foaming, salt scrub, and a face mask. We have a reusable Swedish cloth that was designed by Yarnable and produced by Swede Dishcloths. Says it replaces up to 17 rolls of paper towels with just one eco-friendly Swedish cloth. And it is yarn. So those were our extras this month. My boys are probably gonna steal this, which is so funny. But if I lay this out where they see it, they're gonna, Austin's gonna be like, ooh, a face mask. <laughs> Guarantee. <laughs> they will steal it. So that was our Yarnable box for March. Don't forget to head down if you're interested and get your name on their list to be notified when they have some spots open up. I also had a lot of minis arrive. So I have the Patreon minis from a homespun house and these are for January 2023. So if for some reason you have not received these yet and you don't want to see them, just look away for a few moments. So I get um, her Patreon minis. This is only the second month. I have a blanket. I might have shown that last time or the time before, I can't remember. Um, it's been recently, but here are the three minis. They are very, very pretty. 
I cannot wait to add these into my blanket. Speaking of adding minis into blankets, I also have my row one. Row one is a mini skein subscription service and that is what I'm using in this very large grainy square blanket. So now that I have the next month, because I had completely caught up on all the months I had, now that I have the next month, I can start adding these in. So I have not even opened this yet. These are by Knit Circus. Ooh. There's gonna be a glare, but I'm not gonna take them all out because Calvin is sitting here watching me since I took these out. So if I start taking minis out of here, Calvin's gonna take off with them. Calvin is our cat. Our very rotten cat who loves yarn. Loves to destroy yarn. So there's always a little packet included in row one that always has a sweet treat. What do we have this time? A Charleston chew. I have never had one of those. I will probably save that for Eric. You always have a little progress keeper. It is a balloon dog. You guys can't see that, can you? There's always a little progress keeper. And then there is a piece of paper that tells you a little bit about the yarn, the dyer, the colorway names are listed. So it is 10, 10 gram minis is what you get with the row one subscription service. And I love that they're all individually individually labeled with the yarn dyer and the colorway name. So you don't have to worry about them getting mixed up with other things and then not knowing what they are. They're always labeled individually. And I think that's so awesome of her to do that. So that is all the mail that I have. Now it's time for the summer slack camp announcement. I've had so many messages, comments, emails, about Summer Sock Camp. Um, when are sponsor spots gonna open up? Is Summer Sock Camp still on? Why haven't I talked about it yet? And I have just been trying to decide how I want to do it this year. I don't think it's any like surprise that last year completely overwhelmed me. Um, there were a lot of things that were good overwhelming, but then there was a lot of bad things as well. And I was just, it was way too much, way too much. Um, so I don't think that's any secret. So I've kind of just been really trying to decide how I wanted to handle this year's summer sock camp because I knew I still wanted to have a knit along and how far did I wanna take it and did I wanna have all of the other things that went along with it, the sponsor items, the, you know, all of the things what did I want to do? So I've been having so many conversations with my husband, with close friends, just taking time to really think and decide what works for me, what works for my family, how am I feeling about it? And ultimately it's come down to, yes, Summer Sock Camp is still on, but it is just going to be a knit along. That's it only a knit along. Um, and we're gonna talk about that for, for a bit, a little bit here. I have some things to say. So it is just going to be the knit along and that will be it. I do still have a logo that's being worked on. So there will still be merchandise available in the Spreadshirt shop. That's where you were able to purchase mugs, water bottles, stickers, tote bags with the logo on it tank top, sweatshirts, t-shirts, uh, sweatpants. I mean, everything imaginable kind of is over there on the Spreadshirt shop. That will still happen and I will announce all of the information for that when it's ready to go. It gets closer to the time because we are still in March. If you're new here, Summer Sock Camp doesn't start until um, June 1st. Can't even remember when it starts. It starts to June 1st. So we still have a while. So I will announce the Spreadshirt Shop when that's good and ready to go. But yes, this year there will be 
no bags, no yarn that's special to Summer Sock Camp, no sponsors. It's been a tough decision, kind of, but also not really, because as soon as I made that final decision and had that kind of final conversation that I had with my husband, it was just like this weight was off of me. I have been making so many changes in my life and really focusing on my family, myself, my home. And this that's what I've always done. I have always, with the exception of a very little bit of time where I worked out of the home, I've always been a stay-at-home mom. And this whole knitting and YouTube thing was just kind of a second thing that I did. And when I decided to start the shop, it just kind of exploded and it was amazing. And so exciting that everybody was so excited about it, but it really took me away from doing so many things with my family in my home, like just so many things that I loved and that brought me so much joy. It was taking me away from those things. And so I made that decision to cut back on that. And it has brought me so much happiness throughout this past year, but then thinking about summer sock camp and the stress involved, I was like, no, I don't wanna do it. And like I said, I went back and forth for so long because I'm a people pleaser and I don't wanna disappoint people. I don't want people to feel disappointed or that I've let them down because I'm not having sponsors and I'm not making this this big, huge to do with all of these extra things that you can buy and purchase. And I know I'm gonna get kickback I know people are gonna be mad. People may unfollow me. People may want nothing to do with Summer Sock Camp anymore. I really feel like that's gonna happen. Um, but I'm kind of okay with that because at the end of the day, I have to do what's best for me, what's best for my family, what's best for my mental health, and I have to do what makes me happy. And I cannot even think about trying to do more than a knit along. I want that simple, easy knit along. I want the joy of just knitting socks with y'all all summer long. I don't wanna be packaging orders all summer long. I don't wanna be dealing with coordinating different things with sponsors and all those extra things. I wanna knit socks all summer. I want to soak in all the time I can with my boys all summer. I just, I wanna work outside in the yard have some flower beds, like that's what I'm craving. I feel in so many areas of my life that I am just done with the more, 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 more and the hustle, hustle, hustle mentality. And that's not me, that's never been me and I don't enjoy that. And I really feel like I learned that while the shop was open and with summer sock camp that I don't enjoy that aspect of it and that it doesn't matter how much you do and how hard you work, it never feels like it's enough to please everybody. And I've really, I've got to take a step back from doing anything that involves any of that because that does not, I don't even know the right words to say it, but that is not what I want at all. I know, like I said, that there will be kickback. I'm probably gonna get lots of comments, emails, that's just what I'm anticipating. Um, people are gonna be mad, upset, disappointed. People are going to mean well, but have lots of input on how I should do things. I could do it this way to relieve the stress off of myself. I could do it that way to relieve the stress off of myself. Um, I know there are different options that I could have done. I could have not shipped the items myself. I could have had all the sponsors handle that. But at the end of the day, I don't wanna mess with any of it. None of it at all. None of it. So I'm just gonna like set that boundary here and ask that you please don't contact me with things like that. You may think you mean well, uh, but it's not helpful and I won't be responding to anything negative regarding my decision or telling me I should have done it this way or that way. I'm just gonna set that boundary and say I'm not gonna engage in any conversations about that because at the end of the day, this is my decision and what is best for me. So <laughs> that's the Summer Sock Camp announcement. 
Um, I felt like I needed to discuss all of that because I knew I would be getting a lot of kickback um, with this announcement. But I hope that you guys are excited to kind of just take it back to a good old fashioned knit along. Let's just knit socks, have fun, engage with each other. I will be so excited to actually be able to engage with people in the knit along because that has not happened for sure not last year not even really the year before last. So I'm excited to just knit socks, post about it, do an Instagram live if I feel like about it, just whatever comes up throughout the summer that I want to do, but just really be able to enjoy it. And then also at the same time, be able to enjoy my family, my kids, my husband, my friends, be able to enjoy life this summer. So yeah, bottom line, no bags, no extras like that, yarn, anything like that. Spreadshirt shop merchandise will be the only things with the Summer Sock Camp name or logo. So if you see anything pop up, Summer Sock Camp yarn bags um, that are labeled that way, please know that those are not affiliated with Crazy Sock Lady or with my Summer Sock Camp um, at all. I will not be having sponsored items um, or anyone using the Summer Sock Camp name for items this year. We're just taking it back to a good old fashioned knit along and not going to have that craziness <laughs> this <laughs> summer. So life chat, uh, goodness. So I already talked a little bit about our trip to Columbus. That was, we left on Friday, we came home on Sunday. So it wasn't a long trip, just a weekend trip with me, Eric, my sister Cassie and her husband James. We went to the Columbus Brew Fest on Saturday evening. Um, just where you go and you try a bunch of different, like you get like little tastings of whichever beers you want from different booths from local breweries. So it was a lot of fun to just wander around Columbus with them, go to some fun different places. We did axe throwing, which I was terrible at. I was so bad. Maybe I'll put, I don't know if I have the full video. I think it was just a clip. Um, maybe I won't share the video because it's bad. <laughs> I was terrible. I have always wanted to do ax throwing. I was not good at all. Yeah, it was, it was bad. Uh, Wyatt got the all clear from his orthopedist, from his broken collarbone. So he is all clear to go back to all activities. It was a very long recovery, but he is good to go. Austin got his driver's license last week, so he's loving life right now. You know, he's just driving anywhere and everywhere he can, always wanting to go somewhere. <laughs> he is looking for a job currently, so that is nice. And I think that's about it. I already talked about the weather. It's been cold, super cold today. I think it was only in the 20s, which is cold compared to what we've been to been recently. So yeah, very cold day. We've had some days with snow. I love that kind of weather, but those warm days we had did kind of ruin me. We had like days in the seventies and then we went back to snow and I'm kind of like, okay, <laughs> now I'm feeling ready for spring. This is something that makes me so happy is that we live somewhere that has actual seasons. So I can enjoy winter, but then move on and enjoy warmer weather and that we have not lived somewhere that has had seasons in so long that this is something that I absolutely love about where we live for now. We have a giveaway winner. I hope that whoever won this is still watching <laughs> because I forgot earlier. So I'm gonna put our giveaway winner up here on the screen. Congratulations. If you would please just contact me at Crazy Sock Lady Podcast and give me your shipping information and I will get your prize mailed out to you. Then our giveaway for this episode, it'll be another yarn and goodie bundle, still working our way through the prize cabinet in there, getting through some of these prizes that have backed up over the past year. Um, so we will just do another comment down below. You can comment. Let me know if you're excited for Summer's Not Camp this year. What you're excited for to work on. Like, do you have some certain yarns out of your stash you want to use or some new techniques that you want to learn? What kind of things are you looking forward to with Summer Sock Camp 2023? So thank you guys for joining me for this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. I will see you again soon. Until then, happy making. Bye.